Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MacTube. This is lesson number one in complex analysis. And in this video, we learn the basics of complex functions. And then we make a comparison of the real functions with the complex functions. Okay, so to start, you just consider a function which is defined from R to R. And the function is no one else but our x square. So here I have defined that the domain, the input values will be taken from real number system. That means you can input any real number you like. For example, I can input 0. And I'll get the output 0 square, that is 0. I'll input 1. I'll get the output 1 square, that is 1. I input 1.5, I get the output 1.5 squared, that is 2.25. I input 1.1, I get 1.21. So whatever I input will get squared. Of course, there are negative numbers. If I input minus 1, I'll get 1. If I input minus 10, I'll get 100. And once you plot all these points, look at this, input, output, input, output, input, output or the domain value, the output value, or the x value, f of x value, x value, f of x value, or if you plot x comma f of x, then we get the graph of the function. And here the graph is very familiar for you because it's a parabola. So we get something like this. So remember at every point there will be function values and we get the function. But my interest is not in the picture. My interest is how many dimensions did you use? Of course, you used two dimensions. One dimension for input and one dimension for output. So total two dimensions are used. So when you have a function in one variable, when you have a real valued function in one variable, to plot the graph, you're using two dimensions. Okay, now let's move on towards a complex function. Look at this, the difference between real valued function and complex function will be, the input will be from complex numbers, and of course the output will also be from complex number. And I'm going to write a similar function, f of z equal to z square. You saw something very similar here, f of x equal to x square. But now look at this. In the above function, input values means any number in the x-axis. Look, 0, 1, 1.5, 1.1, minus 1.1. So we have infinite number of numbers here. But in the case of complex functions, input can be any complex number. And graphically, if you want to understand, you can basically input any number you see here. Look at this. If you have the complex number 1 plus 2i, we plot this number as the coordinate 1 comma 2. Or you can use the vector notation. And if you have the complex number 3 plus 4i, we plot that as the point 3 comma 4. So look at this. Our input is complex numbers. Or I can even write this as function from R2 to R2. R2 means two dimension. So look at this. In the real number system, you can input any number you see here on the x-axis. But in the case of complex function, you can input any number you see in the two dimensional plane. And of course, you can imagine the two dimensional plane to be made up of many, 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 many lines parallel to the x-axis or the y-axis. So just imagine how powerful will be this input or how many more points will be in this input. Anyway, suppose you input a complex number. Let's say we are going to input 1 plus i. The output will be 1 plus i, the whole square. And I hope you remember from your uh, high school level that root under minus 1 is high i and i square is minus 1. If you don't remember, please note this. 
and this gives me a square plus 2ab plus i square but i square is minus 1 I just told you i square is minus 1 so we get f of 1 plus i is equal to 0 plus 2i okay so here we go the input is 1 plus i the output is 0 plus 2i now the big question is how to plot this how to plot this look at this here things were very easy input is 1 output is 1 we can plot it in the two dimensional system but here the input itself takes two dimensions where is 1 plus i 1 plus i will be somewhere 1 comma 1 here we have 1 plus i now where to plot 0 comma 2i so the concept is very easy what we do is we use two different planes and normally in the standard books they call the input plane to be the z plane what do you call it the z plane and the output plane to be w plane or the fz plane and the input values in general are called x plus iy and the output values are called u plus iv for example here i will mark x comma y and my input is 1 comma 1 and my output will be marked as u comma v and my output is 0 comma 2 so that's a point on the x-axis so here so corresponding to this input i get the output over here if i plug in 2i the output will be 2i the whole square because the function is f of z equal to z square and that will be 4i square and i square is minus 1 that is minus 4 plus 0i okay so the input is 0 2 so the input is here and the output is minus 4 so look at this corresponding to every input here you're going to get an output here so corresponding to circle you might get some sort of because a circle is made up of many 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 points and every point will have an output and correspondingly you'll get some other sort of curve over here so remember this is how we plot complex functions so I'll make it more clear for you because some of you might be really confused. Let's imagine a real valued function f of x equal to x square, a single variable real valued function. The advantage of real valued function is your input will be the x axis. You can literally input anything you see on the x axis. And the output will also be real numbers and if you want to make a graph we always plot input comma output output means the function value so the graph will be uh, what you call well designed inside the box or uh, you can plot everything in the rectangular coordinate system but in the case of complex functions look at this the function looks similar but now we have a big problem the input is a complex number complex number means any point on the two dimension any point on the two dimension so there are millions and millions and millions of points more than this here you take numbers only from the x-axis now just imagine how many lines can you draw parallel to the x-axis so that much number of input will be more here so the trick is very simple we take the input from complex plane and the output will be marked on another complex plane by the way uh, when you mark complex number in the two dimensional cartesian system that system will take a new name it's called argand diagram that is to make us clearly understand we are not plotting the two dimensional points but the complex number so this is called the argand diagram and the input plane is normally called the z plane and the output plane is called the w plane so i hope you understood the real the difference between real functions and complex functions and some others use one more technique what they do is uh, they take the input value and they plot the modulus of the output value that is also one more technique so this 
this needs three dimensions because input means x comma y and output will be a real number because you are taking the modulus you are taking the distance of the um, what do you call the new complex number so this will be done in three dimensions anyway uh, this is how we plot complex numbers now the interesting part is just like we defined limits continuity derivatives we can define the same thing in complex numbers for the complex functions and you can be um, very happy about one thing most of the concepts are analogous they seem to be the same many of the properties are working and later on when you learn about complex derivatives integrals etc you will even notice the formula looks alike but you have to understand one thing the real function and the complex functions are completely different real function is a very weak function you cannot put uh, what do you call uh, even though we, there are infinite number of points just imagine the input we do here and the output we analyze here so this is comparatively taking very 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 less number of points compared to this now look at this so we can define limit continuity derivative etc for the complex number complex functions also okay now once more i'll make it very clear the input variable for a complex function is normally denoted by z and we will use the complex number x plus i y for the input and the output that is the function value will be denoted by u plus i v anyway in my videos this will be the standard notation my input will be x plus i y and my output will be f of z and sometimes uh, if i want to make it short i will call it w equal to f z because basically the output is also a complex number and i am calling it w and graphically my input plane will be called the z plane and the output plane will be called the w plane okay so there is a small video where i wanted to introduce you to the complex functions and i wanted you to understand the difference between uh, the the way we graph and the and how powerful the complex functions are so i'll be back with another video where we learn how to separate the complex functions into real part and imaginary part so till then my friends bye